Hi everybody, welcome back um, to what we'll call Flying Pig Jimmy. Um, I just wanted to share, I know I had a video a little bit ago about my thrifting adventures and and, and also like tabletop games and different things I was, I was kind of getting back into. Um, and I just wanted to kind of update you on a few things. Um, we did do um, the baseball and football card unwrapping. Um, but we lost the video. Uh, I've heard stories. I watch a good bit of YouTube, and I've heard stories of people. They filmed this and they filmed that, and it was gone. And that's kind of what happened to us. So I can kind of relate. So I'm just going to kind of run through and just kind of show you some of the cards that I got from the 1991 Flair football uh, cards. And there's quite a few guys that I don't know. And then I had three packs of the um, Tops 19. I think it was 88 baseball cards uh, that I did eat and survive the 35-year-old stick gum. So we're just going to kind of look through this quick. Um, so one thing I thought was neat was um, the old Tampa Bay Buccaneers creamsicle uniforms. That was the top card, actually. And I don't think I know who this player is. Mark Carrier? Eh, maybe I do. I've heard of him. I think he's a wide receiver. But it's actually interesting because uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers just announced... Uh, that they're bringing, bringing back the cream supple uniforms, which um, I know it's a sport and all that, but um, there's a couple helmets that I, mini helmets that I own because it kind of takes me back to my younger days and some of the neater helmets in the NFL that used to be. Uh, and the cream supple Tampa Bay Buccaneers was one of them. And I think they changed their look because they were a loser in this uniform when they first came into the league. And then they started winning with a darker kind of theme, tougher, I guess, meaner. Uh, but now that they're winners, now they think they can bring this back and survive. So I thought that was kind of neat. The old um, Tampa Bay Buccaneers cream circle uniforms are coming back. Um, I think this gentleman here, Ray Donaldson, was an all-pro um, lineman from the uh, Indianapolis Colts. So that, that card came in there. I did, I did look up some of these as far as their value. Um, nothing too crazy. Uh, Jeff Hostetler... Uh, I believe he might be somewhat local. Maybe a West Virginia quarterback, I believe. Um, I'm just trying to think of anyone else. Kevin Green was a, a, a very good defensive lineman for the, for the Rams. Um, I'm just trying to see who else. Cheryl Edmonds, um, Lewis Brown, Mark Rippian. And so not a whole lot uh, of like known players in the football I just thought I'd share this because we lost that information and I know I was going to have like a big uh, reveal. And then for the baseball cards, I did get one card, maybe two cards, that I believe the one is pretty valuable. Um, but just some like Buddy uh, Buddy Bell for the Reds and, and Mike Maddox for the Phillies, Alan Ashby, Alan Ashby for the Astros. Um, I'm just trying to think. But I did not get sick from the gums, so that was a good thing. But it was pretty terrible. And that's coming from somebody who really enjoys candy. <laughs> um, let me see here. I'm trying to think. Ozzy Virgil, Daryl Boston, Steve Jelts. But let me, I'm trying to find this one card. that it, I don't know if I had the exact one, because it seems like it was one that was um, perhaps... Um, like a blemish card. So I did have a, a Wade Boggs uh, American League All-Star. I got one of those. I thought that was a good card. Turns, turns, turns the clock back for me. Wait for the Red Sox. Yep. And then I have 1987 Record Breaker with Mark McGuire. He was one of my favorite players uh, when I was younger. I uh, was a big home run hitter. And then I do believe I have a Mark McGuire um, rookie card, I believe. And this is the card that I think it might be worth... Not a lot of money, but maybe fifty dollars. Uh, I looked up a couple different things, so so I have to look into that. Not that I'm going to become a huge card collector, but that was kind of my idea when I oops, when I bought these cards um, in Arkansas. Was that you know maybe I'd get something that was somewhat valuable, and also kind of turn back the clock, look at some older players. So I thought that was kind of neat. Thought I'd share that with you. But so yeah, so that was a fun little thing. Um, so the, some of the other things that I recently purchased um was so i know i re referenced that when i was younger i played tabletop games and i've kind of gotten back into 
uh, to that as I've gotten older and uh, I have a little more free time. Um, so one thing I did purchase recently, and I'll put a link below, there's a gentleman, gentleman named John, I think Sparty, and he makes these, these stadiums, they're called mini dice stadiums. Uh, you know, he has a couple, well not more than a couple, he has quite a few of different stadiums that he makes. And the idea is, so when you're playing your tabletop game, instead of just rolling it on the table, you can kind of roll it in the, in the stadium. And I thought that was kind of neat. I don't know if I'll use this, even though I have been kind of using it a little bit lately, uh, as a mini stadium dice rolling apparatus. Um, but I might just sit on the corner of my tabletop just for atmosphere or for ambiance or whatever. But it is kind of neat. You roll your dice in it, and you know that kind of tells the result of, of if you're playing a baseball game or whatever. Uh, so I thought that was neat. So I'll put his link below. So if you know somebody that's into tabletop games and um, might like something like this of their favorite stadium, of their favorite team. I got the Montreal Expos. Uh, it was kind of my team when I was growing up. They don't exist anymore. It's been quite a while, actually. But he does, um, he makes stadiums of, you know, past and present. So if you have a team right now you like, you like a, the Fenway Park or Wrigley Field, he makes those. So it just kind of gives your tabletop a, a, a neat feel. So I thought, so I thought I'll show you that best I can. So I thought that was kind of neat, but I'll put his link in the description below. Really nice work. Um, not meant to be like a showpiece. Well, I guess it is not meant to be a showpiece per se, because it's supposed to accompany, you know, rolling dice into it. Um, but it's really, it's really neat. It kind of, like I said, it turns the clock back. It's kind of like how Dagny does, like, vintage glassware, and, you know, it kind of turns the clock back. This kind of does the same thing for me. So I thought I'd share that. Uh, let's see. So I also, uh, one of the baseball games, so I play two baseball games. I play Appa Baseball. Um, that's the game I played when I was a kid, and I've kind of picked it back up. And then there's another big company um, called Stratomatic, and... I also play their, they have baseball and football and uh, basketball and hockey. I play their baseball and hockey games a little bit. So they just recently had like a July 4th sale. So I did, so just to kind of give you an idea. So I did pick up a few seasons, I think three. So I picked up, let me see here, I gotta feel what these are. I need my glasses help. My glasses helper. <laughs> uh, let's see. There we go. So I picked up the 1924 um, baseball season. So that's kind of neat. So we can kind of turn the clock back and play with some old time baseball players, like for the Babe Ruth days and stuff like that. So that's 1924. I also picked up 1911. So 112 years ago, which I think is super cool. Um, you know, some interesting names. Um, Tris Speaker, Harry Hooper. Just, just like I said, Duffy Lewis. And I don't know who a lot of these players are. But, like, I just thought it'd be neat to, you know, kind of turn back the clock and, and play with some older teams. And, um, you know, as I get back into this hobby. And I'm still working on my, my, uh, my gaming area. It's not quite finished yet, but I will show you the finished product when it's done. It's going to be really neat. Of course, this Montreal Expo's mini dice stadium will definitely sit on it, so you'd have to see that. I'm actually thinking about getting another one, believe it or not. I haven't made that decision yet. Um, but just because, you know, I can get another older stadium, and I think it'd be pretty cool. Um, and then I got the 1934 um, Stratomatic Baseball season. And one of the reasons, I, I don't know, I didn't open these yet, as you can tell. One of these reasons I got this is because um, there were two pitchers uh, that pitched back in the 1930s, maybe late 1920s, uh, Dizzy and Daffy Dean. And and here's Dizzy Dean's card. So I thought it'd be neat to play with them. But just, just some of the old names. And this had gone back 90 years to play some uh, vintage uh, baseball season I thought would be fun. So so this is for Stratomatic, so I thought that was fun. So I thought I'd share that. And I think what else? My glasses. Joy, joys of getting old. <laughs> so, um, oh, uh, no, that's it. 
I did pick up a book, another book recently. I used to read these um, when I was a, when I was younger, when I was a kid. Um, the Dennis the Menace thing. I love this sh the show, the black and white show with Jade North. When I was a kid, I loved that. Actually, I think I might have a few of the seasons uh, that I purchased on DVD. Um, but I did I did see this so once again. I thought that was kind of that was kind of neat. I'm sure I'm sure some of you watching used to read old comic books, and when you see them, it kind of turns back the clock. Turn, turns the clock back for you and all that, but um, so yeah, I thought that was that was a nice little pickup. This is for me. I'm not going to resell this or anything like that, but, um, but I think that's everything. So if you have any uh, comments or please put them below. Any questions? And I will be showing my um, my tabletop gaming area, which I'm currently uh, building in the basement in a, in a corner of a basement. I have to put in some wood and and create a little. Um, nice not a little nice big little oh, nice big little <laughs> create a big um a big tabletop so like things like this Montreal Expo's mini dice stadium fits and maybe another one if I get it if I decide to get it if I think it's necessary to have another one <laughs> uh and of course yeah, space for the for the game whether it's Stratomatic or it's uh the Apple but I do have a big Apple uh project coming up um I recently created some team names like fictional team names and i'm going to do a draft starting with the 1975 uh season using appa the appa basic game and i'm gonna i think i think i'm gonna do i know i'm gonna do at least a 50 game season uh i'm thinking more of an 81 game season because kind of half of the regular baseball season i haven't decided on that yet but i'm trying to put things together in my mind how i want to play that uh as far as this fictional but i'm gonna have like a draft but it's not gonna be like drafting it's gonna be more like like I don't know who's going, but I'm going to like, separate the, the guys based on their position. And, like, there the teams are envelopes, like, in front of me, just so I can, they can relate. And I'll just kind of face down. I'll just kind of pull a card out and just kind of just put them on teams and then look at them when they're done and see, you know, what their teams are made of as far as the players and, and then start to start to play the season. And then I'm going to have, like, a carryover, like, whether it's a 50 or an 81 game season, you know, have, like, a playoff. I haven't figured out all the specifics yet. Uh, it's my little world, my little league, um, and then and then get the '76 season, and then like teams will be able to keep certain players, like you know, three infielders, two out. They'll be able to keep once they figure out all the specifics. Um, they'll be able to keep so many players, and then the other guys will go back kind of in the pool to get redrafted by or reselected, randomly selected by other teams, and then the new players will come in. Uh, which I don't know who they are from 76. So like a bad team might be able to pick up a better player to give them a, a better chance to win for that next season. And my, my, my idea is, is, to, is to go from year to year, starting with 75. Um, so I'm thinking I can, I'm not really sure how it's gonna work out, but that, that's kind of my tentative plan. So um, so you guys stick around, stick around for that. And I think that's everything for now. So let me see here, if that's all here. So. Another one? Oh, the stadiums? Yeah. Well, they don't. I don't. I don't think he makes football, and I could be wrong. Um, he could. I mean, I, I don't know if he does though. I think it's mostly baseball. Um, baseball is the most popular cards and dice game. Well, he makes all stadiums. He makes uh, Fenway Park, and well, I got I got the Montreal Expos. Well, I, I maybe the Houston Astrodome. I thought I think that might be neat. Uh, that stadium doesn't exist anymore. If it does, they don't play in it. They have a new stadium. But something once again to turn the clock back. Something to turn. Yeah, I thought that would be neat. Something to turn the clock back. But um, but I think that's everything for now. I appreciate you watching and and I guess I'll put some links in the description. Also, uh, you know, there, I, I think I mentioned before, and uh, I'll probably link it just so because uh, I really enjoy. There's a podcast that I, I listen to. Uh, pretty religiously, um, I'm actually a Patreon supporter of the channel. It's called Digital of the Dice with Dave Gardner and Ron Junket. So I'm going to probably put a link in that description. So if, if you know anybody that's interested or was or used to and maybe wants to get back into it, you know, trying to simplify life a little bit, uh, tabletop games, not just sports. I mean, there's war games and there's other kind of games that people are into. Um, I'm into mostly uh, sports games, mostly uh, baseball, and mostly baseball, sometimes hockey. Um, but I'm, obviously, I got the I got the red, white, and blue racing by Play Games, and I also got um, History Maker Golf by Play Games. I haven't had a chance to to break those out and and uh, start to 
kind of play uh, with them yet because I'm waiting for my tabletop um, area to be complete. And I'll, I have space to spread out because these games do take a lot of space. So I do appreciate you checking in with me today. And I hope everyone's having a great weekend. And Lion Pate Jimmy is checking out. And I'll see ya.